Oh, hey girls, what are you doing? Eating dried mango. What? Eating dried mango. <laughs> dried mango? Why? Because daddy let us. Oh, wow, that seems like it's something really nice. Us. How does it taste? It tastes ooh. sweet and good. Sweet? Why is it sweet? I don't know. Because it's, it's a fruit. Because it has what, Lizzie? Sugar. Sugar. Uh, hey girls, where does all that sugar come from? Maple syrup. Plants! Plants! Sugar! Plants! All plants? Yes. Yes! Even this plant? Crocus. Yes. I want to see the video now. <laughs> even, prim even primitive plants. Primitive plants like what? Moss. So girls, what is this right here? What is that? Plants. Oh, this is the thing you were just talking about. So you're saying that this makes sugar? Yeah. How does it do that? What's the name of the process that makes sugar? Photosynthesis. What? <laughs> the girls are absolutely right. It's photosynthesis. We take water from underground, we take carbon dioxide out of the air, and using energy from sunlight, we can turn it into sugar. Uh, hey girls, is it just plants that do photosynthesis? Yes! yes! Wrong! Let's go find some more things that do photosynthesis. You ready? Yes! Let's go. Hey Brenda, what is that? Lichen. What? Truth is, girls, we believe that photosynthesis started over three billion years ago. And even though not every creature can do it, some of the simplest creatures on Earth can do some form of photosynthesis. Uh, so really, when you think about it, it kind of all started right here. I mean, not exactly this puddle, this puddle, but some body of water somewhere, probably the oceans. Hey, girls. What kind of creatures are in that water that can do photosynthesis? Rocks. Protists. Protists. And what else? Cyanobacteria. What in there? <laughs> oh my goodness, those poor microbes. So there you have it, grade 12s. This is your next topic for this week of grade 12 biology. We've learned about cellular respiration where we can take glucose and break it down into ATP. And your next task is to figure out exactly where that glucose came from. And as the girls pointed out, this process is super important, uh, really for creating all of the food on earth. And remember that's because eukaryotic cells develop this partnership with mitochondria. Now I considered making another one of my videos for you uh, for this week, but I've decided that mm, probably I should give you a resource that's even better than the videos that I can make. I'm going to send you this week to the Howard Hughes Medical Institute website where there is an incredible series of videos and animations that's going to walk you through step by step everything that you need to know for photosynthesis. So come with me and I'll give you a little walkthrough for how to find it and how to use it and what you're going to do with it this week. So here we are, once again, your favorite website, sites.google.com slash tdsb.on.ca slash Mr. Kleiman. That's going to take you to our class homepage. And let's navigate over to our class under biology. SBI for you, and I'll use my little drop down here to quickly get to Unit 2 Metabolic Processes. And we've spent our first week on cellular respiration, and this is traditionally the resources that I would have used for that. You um, can have a look at those if you're interested, but these are not requirements. I've also posted some videos here. Really awesome, again, not required, but if you want to go a bit deeper and have a look at some of those, you can. Uh, but here is the information for this week. And unlike last week, 
when we're looking at photosynthesis, I don't plan this week to make the same kind of video for you that I made last week. Uh, this is the PowerPoint presentation that I would have based my uh, lecture on, but instead I'm going to send you over to the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. You're going to click on this link right here, and trust me guys, it does a much better job than I ever could. So here's the website it's going to take you to. You're going to click on Play Animation. It's going to have this fancy load up page and now you're in. When you're ready you click Start and that entire sequence is incredibly beautifully detailed, animated, at your level. Uh, it's delightful and the whole thing is covered in about 11 minutes of your time. I'm embarrassed by my 45 minute lecture from last week. So play around with that. That's going to be your primary teaching tool. And then, of course, the next thing I'm going to ask you to do is to come back to your trusty old textbook and spend a little bit of time reading. So that's going to be sections 5.1, 5.2, and 5.4. That will parallel exactly what you just saw in the videos. Remember, at mynelson.com, you've got your online textbook ready and waiting for you. Uh, we're looking at chapter 5. Uh, so 5.1 is your overview with all of the parts of the leaf and the chloroplast, etc. Uh, some background info about how photosynthesis works. And then really 5.2 is the nitty gritty of it. This is uh, the light and the dark reactions that are taking place inside of the chloroplasts. Just want to quickly highlight this diagram for you right here, uh, which is looking at the insides of a chloroplast. And if you look at that, it's incredibly similar uh, to the electron transport chain that we saw in the mitochondria. In fact, mitochondria and chloroplasts are very, very similar organelles, probably derived from prokaryotes that were very closely related to each other. The main difference in this electron transport chain is that it's absorbing energy, not from glucose, but absorbing energy directly from the sun to excite electrons and pass them through the chain and pump protons across a membrane. Then it still uses that proton gradient through a nearly identical version of this enzyme ATP synthase to get that job done of generating ATP. Uh, we can now feed these end products of ATP and the high energy molecule NADPH into the Calvin cycle to store some of that energy for later in the form of glucose. And so this diagram right here really is the crux of the lesson and one of the uh, options that you have for a hand in activity for this week is to essentially recreate this diagram uh, Please make it look aesthetically your own. I don't want to see it being an exact perfect verbatim copy of this, but I would like you to create a full and detailed diagram uh, of the light reactions of photosynthesis and a separate diagram that's highlighting the main steps of the Calvin cycle. Uh, and I'll show you just in a second which diagram you can model that after and submit it just like you did last week. So I'm going to call that option one will be to produce a detailed recreation uh, of this process. Let me quickly show you the dark reactions which are just on the next uh, pages over here. So whoops, it's on page uh, 226. You've got this lovely little diagram that's summarizing for you how we feed in ATP and we feed in NADPH and what we eventually are churning out of this process okay, is G3P and you can combine two of those to make glucose. Okay, so that's photosynthesis. Um, so like I said, that's option one. Uh, option two, I know a lot of folks in this class are thinking about the uh, medical track in their careers, and so I thought a great final opportunity for people to improve their marks uh, might be to relate our metabolic processes unit uh, to some issues in medicine. So if that appeals to you, uh, you'd go back to my website here, and you'd scroll up above photosynthesis 
to these two links right here. And so let me quickly navigate you through them. Uh, the first one, Metabolic Pathways Map, and I've said it's simply amazing because it is, uh, is this page right here. You can click right there and it's going to take you to this incredible interactive map. Now you can kind of use it here, but I recommend clicking on this interactive metabolic pathways map button. And that's going to launch this full interactive version of this metabolic pathways map. And whew, look at the complexity here, guys. This is a map of pretty much every chemical reaction of significance that's taking place inside of cells. And so if you look right down the middle here, this pathway, this central pathway right here is something you already know well. Hey, I know that molecule, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Well, fructose 6-phosphate, this is glycolysis. And you can see that is a central reaction happening in the cytoplasm. It's going to show you the chemical structure of that molecule. It's going to give you the name of that molecule. And then it's going to show you all these reaction arrows of different things you can do with it. And so this number right here refers to an enzyme. This is a specific code that uh, we can use to identify the name of the enzyme that does that particular metabolic process. And so this is everything. If we go down here, uh, oxaloacetate, citrate, isocitrate, you know these. This is the Krebs cycle. This green box here represents the reactions happening in the mitochondria. Look at that. There's our handy dandy ATP synthase. This dotted green line is our uh, inner mitochondrial membrane. We're generating a proton gradient. It's got everything, guys. Uh, it even uh, has right over here a simplified version of photosynthesis and how that relates uh, to what's going on inside of eukaryotic cells as well. This is a chloroplast. Okay, and there you can see the ATP synthase of the chloroplast. And so you can also type things in. So for example, I can go glycolysis. Oops, glycolysis, and there it is. And it's going to drop a pin in every single intermediate and every single enzyme that's related to that process. So I really encourage you to explore and play around with this resource. It truly is mind blowing. You could spend hours here. If you've got time, use it. Uh, if you're going quick, uh, that's fine as well. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of time here. But if we go back to my website, here is a file that is a PDF version of that interactive map. And if you look at that one, it's called the inborn errors of metabolism. This is the same diagram produced by the same people. But for this one, around the perimeter of the diagram, what you're going to find are errors in metabolism. And so you can see they've circled Okay, the names of enzymes. Okay, we follow that arrow down to here, and this is saying that this particular enzyme called galactokinase, uh, sometimes people are born with a broken or defective gene for that enzyme. And if they have a broken or defective gene for that enzyme, they have this disease, galactose kinase deficiency. And so your second option for how you can... Uh, get some marks this week is that you can do a little research project on one inborn genetic condition related to metabolism in cells uh, that interests you. And what you would do is you would look up a bit of information about that broken enzyme, what it does, and then a little bit of information about that disease. And you could submit a nice little summary form for me about what that enzyme normally does when it's functioning properly. Uh, what generally breaks about that enzyme, and what are the health consequences, treatments, uh, a basic summary of that disease for me. Okay, and a couple of other quick tools that can help you out if you choose option B. Uh, so that little enzyme number, one starting point you might have to get some information about it is to go to the website okay, uh, for Brenda. I swear I didn't make this up. Yes, that is the name of my daughter, but it's also the name of the most comprehensive enzyme information system 
uh, available online. And I was very curious where, what that acronym actually stands for, so I looked it up on Wikipedia. And it says right here that it's the short for this. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that because my German is terrible, but this was the original uh, name of that database. In any case, uh, you type in your enzyme number over here. So maybe we'll use uh, that example uh, that I had a minute ago. This is 2.7.1.6. So I would go 2.7.1.6. And there's my enzyme. And there it is, galactokinase. And so the first thing I would ask you to do is to write this uh, series of information down for me. So the 2 represents that it's a transferase. The 2.7 is that it's transferring uh, phosphorus containing group. And so you can kind of get to know a little bit of what those code numbers actually mean. And you can find related enzymes by clicking on any one of those. And then if you scroll down, it's going to show you the exact uh, chemical reaction that uh, this particular enzyme mediates. So that's pretty cool. And then sometimes you'll find additional information about the enzyme in here, about what it normally does. Uh, another great place, of course, to look up your enzyme is going to be on Wikipedia. Uh, you can do your own basic internet research. And the last thing that I want to show you is that each disease comes with a MIM number. And that is in reference uh, to OMIM, which is the Online Mendelian Inheritance in Man. Didn't make that one up either. But basically, when you input the OMIM number, so once again, this particular OMIM number, 230200, 230200, okay. Um, that's going to take you to your disease and it's going to tell you exactly how this disease is inherited, give you a description of the disease, give you uh, some links to some of the main studies that were ever done about this disease, um, and a couple of other references and links that you can chase and follow to look at some primary literature about what's written. And this is, um, I think, as close to university level work um, as you're, you're maybe going to find this year. Uh, this might be our last chance to really get a solid, wicked research project in. So I encourage you, if you've got the time to do this one, this is going to be a little more involved. And you know, in reality, this might stretch you a bit beyond that three hours. Um, I don't know how long it'll take you. Um, I am totally cool if uh, you'd like to do the simpler option of the recreation of the diagram like you did last week. It's up to you. I wish you the very best of luck. I'm going to be available for a tutorial for you. I've decided this Thursday at 11 o'clock to give you a bit of time uh, to at least look over this material and develop your questions for me. And uh, the very latest I think that I'd like to get all this stuff back by uh, is Monday so that I can get your uh, final marks prepared for these midterms. Um, that's it for now, guys. Good luck.